Hey, crime connoisseurs. If you're like me, you love diving into a good book. I especially love finding a book about cases we cover. But sometimes it's hard to find the time to sit and read. We live in an on-the-go society. Thankfully, Audible makes it easy to instantly access the books we love without sacrificing our time. With over 180,000 audiobooks and more, you will undoubtedly find one that will grip you and leave you not wanting to pull away while still being able to do other things. You can get a free 30-day trial membership by going to audibletrial.com backslash ccpod to start listening to your favorite books. That's audibletrial.com backslash ccpod for your free 30-day trial membership. Hey, all my fellow crime connoisseurs. I'm your host, Grace D. Today's case is a doozy. It takes place in March of 2010 in a small town in Virginia, just an average Monday that wouldn't end that way. A young man goes missing without a trace and has never been seen or heard from again. Thirteen years later, rumors still swirl around this case. There's very little media coverage, and the family is surrounded by tragedy. This is the case of Shane Donahue. March 22nd, 2010, Shane Donahue finished a tiling job for Colgan Air in Manassas, Virginia. He brought in his friend Timothy Hickerson to assist him with the job. Timmy's family owned a local electric company in the area. Colgan Air was an American certified regional airline that was a subsidiary of the Pinnacle Airlines Corporation. It ended up being phased out on September 5th, 2012. Now, Shane was paid $5,000 for his work, and he gave Timmy $1,000 for his cut. After the job was complete, Shane and Timmy planned to go out to celebrate finishing the job. They stopped at Shane's parents' house in the 14,000 block of Aiden Road in Noakesville before heading to Shane's place. Shane lived in a duplex in the 12,000 block of Aiden Road, not even two miles down the road from his parents. Shane got into Timmy's truck, and headed to Shane's around 3.45 p.m. When Shane's mom, Donna, didn't hear from Shane later that night, she started to get nervous. You see, Shane had called and talked to his mom every single day. He's the middle of three children. He has an older brother, Sean, and a little sister, Cheyenne. The following day, on the 23rd, Donna tried calling Shane to check in on him, but his phone went straight to voicemail. She repeatedly tried to get in touch with him, calling over and over, and still, her calls went straight to voicemail. Donna and her husband, Brian, grew even more concerned and decided to go to Shane's to check on him. The lights and the TV were on when they entered the home, but no Shane. It was as if he just up and disappeared into thin air and completely vanished. On March 24th, 2010, Donna and Brian reported their son missing. The Prince William County Police Department is handling the case. The Donahues told the police the last time they had seen and heard from Shane was Monday the 22nd and that he was with his friend Timmy Hickerson. They said the boys left in a Hickerson Brothers electric blue box truck. Timmy's dad and uncle own the family business. Shane doesn't have access to a vehicle. He heavily relied on family and friends for rides. Shane had roughly a dozen traffic violations from what I was able to obtain through criminal and traffic records on Truthfinder. And because of this, it wasn't believed that Shane left on his own accord. And on top of that, when police checked phone records and with the bank, there hadn't been any activity on them. 
Shane had two phones, and according to Detective Brian Wing of the Prince William County Police Department, both phones went off around 4 p.m. on the 22nd. So they were either both turned off at the same time, or coincidentally, they both died at the exact same time. Now, it's unknown why Shane had two phones. No one ever says for sure. There's speculation of one being a burner phone for drugs, but this was not confirmed. Police performed searches throughout the area for Shane. They also brought Timmy in for questioning since he was the last person to have been in contact with and seen Shane before his disappearance. The police searched Shane's duplex with luminol, looking for blood splatter, DNA evidence, and any signs of a struggle. But they didn't find anything. Nothing. No DNA, no blood splatter, no struggle. It was just as if he up and vanished. Now, Donna and Brian paid for cadaver dogs to search the Noakesville parks, lakes, and ponds, but the dogs never reacted. Time slowly ticks on, and they are no closer to finding where Shane is or what happened to him. Almost two years after Shane's disappearance, Donna did an interview with the Washington Examiner. She told them how, shortly before Shane disappeared, his duplex was broken into by acquaintances. They stole his medications, and Donna noted how Shane was highly upset. Every day, Donna wears a button with a picture of Shane on it, and she has a calendar hanging in her kitchen that marks the number of days since Shane disappeared. The Donahues also have a large sign erected in the front yard that says, We love and miss you. Contains a photo of the group name on Facebook and a photo of Shane. They have the number of days since Shane disappeared that they manually change each day, and it has an anonymous tip line phone number on it. I'll have a picture on Instagram for you guys to see. There have been a lot of rumors about what happened to Shane, or where he might be, but nothing credible has surfaced. There's a local community web forum that people have posted to, the Donahues and friends looking for answers, others trying to help, and those who are sick and twisted posting just awful things. The forum is called Fairfax Underground. On April 5th, 2010, shortly after Shane went missing, Someone posted asking, does anyone know what happened to him? With the header titled, help find Shane Donahue. This particular post on the thread said, friends and family in all of Northern Virginia. This group has been created to spread the word for search of Shane Donahue. Last seen on Monday, March 22nd, 2010. Age 23. Height 6'3". Weight 185 pounds. Eyes brown. He was last seen Monday, March 22nd, 2010. Supposedly, he was dropped off at his house. And the next few posts supported finding Shane by saying things like, why hasn't this gotten more media coverage? Now, there were also such awful things posted by people On October 1st, 2010, several months after Shane disappeared, one post wrote, I killed that piece of shit and buried him in a shallow grave just outside of Sterling. Look for that derogatory F word. Shane's decomposing body next to a stop sign on Route 23. I skull fucked him before digging the grave. Unfortunately, we are well aware of people reporting false tips and giving false hope to the loved ones of those missing, and it's jacked up, but this this is a whole other level of messed up. Like, to write something like that is just awful when this family is grieving and trying to find their loved one, and you just took it to a whole other level. Their handle on the forum is Shane's Donapoo. This person is the perfect definition of an internet troll on social media. And sadly, this wasn't the only awful post people made. On October 25th, 2010, another poster claimed that Shane was at a party 
on March 20th, 2010, just two days before he disappeared, and a fight broke out between him and some others. They said that Shane said that Timmy and others broke into his home and stole his medications. The poster claims that people involved said they were going to get even, and Timmy said he would make it right. They had a service job coming up on March 22nd. Timmy picked up Shane, and Shane was never seen again. I'm not mentioning the other names that the poster wrote, because in all of my research, those names have never come up. I'll link the web form in the show notes to the post for you guys to be able to read, and you can see everything on there for yourselves. The police have followed up on leads, but nothing has panned out. The interview details with Timmy still have yet to be made public. If Timmy knows anything, he isn't saying. In fact, according to Detective Wing, no one is saying anything. There has been a lot of speculation that Timmy has had something to do with Shane's disappearance since he was the last person to see him. Detective Wing did confirm that Timmy is a person of interest in Shane's case. Some people believe that since Timmy's dad was the chief of the Noakesville Volunteer Fire Department, they have conspired with the law enforcement. Noakesville is a small town in Virginia that's about 9.5 square miles. It's the kind of area where everyone knows everyone. The population of Noakesville in 2010 was 1,354 people. That's it. Prince William County is 348 square miles, divided into three patrol districts, serving a diverse population of more than 450,000 residents. A district commander and several watch commanders oversee each parole district. Prince William County is 348 square miles, divided into three patrol districts serving a diverse population of more than 450,000 residents. A district commander and several watch commanders oversee each patrol district. The districts operate three patrol shifts, days, evenings, and midnights providing 24-hour police coverage, seven days a week, 365 days a year to the residents and visitors of Prince William County. Given that information about Noakesville and Prince William County, I'll leave it to you guys to decide if any colluding was involved. One month after Shane was last seen, on April 22, 2010, Timmy Hickerson broke into a guns and ammo warehouse at 10951 Noakesville Road in Noakesville, Virginia. Timmy tore out a section of metal beneath a window pane at the store but couldn't get in that way. He then broke the glass to an adjoining business, a nail salon, entered inside the guns and ammo, and stole a rifle and a suppressor. Another month after that, on May 29th, Timmy broke into guns and ammo again smashing a back door and stealing six firearms and silencers. The next day, he attempted to break into the Virginia Arms Store on Center Street in Manassas, but two employees in the store confronted him. The employees realized someone had unsuccessfully tried to break in on the previous night. On the night of the 30th, they stayed the night at the store, thinking that maybe the burglar would come back again. And wouldn't you know it, He did. They heard Timmy trying to pry open the back door. So the employees confronted him while pointing guns at him. Timmy tried running to his car to escape, but couldn't unlock his car door. So he decided to run into a nearby wooded area. He was eventually caught there by law enforcement. And since he was a regular at the store, the employees recognized him and were able to identify him to police. When Timmy went to court for the burglaries, the Donahues went to court and tried to speak with the prosecutor about how they believed Timmy was involved with Shane's disappearance. The Hickersons were upset by this and felt like this was harassment. They didn't think Timmy was involved at all. Timmy Hickerson received several charges, including attempted burglary, grand larceny, three counts of destruction of property, and three counts of statutory burglary. 
He served a four-year sentence in a federal prison, which began in 2011. Between July 15, 2000 to May 30, 2010, Timmy had 24 charges between criminal and traffic offenses, including burglary and drug possession. According to Detective Wing, Shane did odd jobs for a living and was quite possibly a low-level drug dealer in the Noakesville area. While Shane relatively stayed out of trouble for the most part, aside from the traffic violations, there were two convictions for possession of marijuana in April of 2006 and January of 2009. Two years before he disappeared, his roommate was busted by the FBI for narcotics distribution. During the time of Shane's disappearance, his mom Donna had been battling breast and colon cancer for the last six years. Shane had dinner at his parents' house almost every night. Donna said, Bubba would never leave me like this. Shane's parents believe that Shane is dead and have even purchased a grave plot for him. But police have not given up hope, and the cold case remains open. Every year, Prince William County posts information on its social media accounts on Shane's missing persons case. In an article I read from Desert News from December 22, 2011, Detective Wing stated, The tipster who called Crime Stoppers recently, we'd like them to call back. So this gave some light for the Donahues that there was some possible information that was valid and could lead to finding Shane. In April 2013, police searched the area of the duplex that Shane had been renting. They even went as far as to drain the septic tank. However, nothing came of this. The Hickerson family has lived in Noakesville for generations and is predominant in the community. They even have a street named after them. Because Timmy was the last person's shame before his disappearance, there have been many rumors and issues for both families. The Donahues had flyers hung up all over town, and one day, someone vandalized and tore the flyers down. It was suspected to be an uncle of Timmy's. The Donahues had a photo of the Hickerson brothers' electric truck on the flyer, and some took this as the Donahues accusing them of foul play, but the Donahues say it was just because that was the last truck that Shane was seen in. In 2015, after serving four years in federal prison, Timmy Hickerson was free. After his release, he moved down to Palm Coast, Florida. He hasn't had any reported run-ins with the law since his release. In 2018, there was a glimmer of hope for the Donahues when the body of an unidentified male was found in a wooded area in Noakesville. Unfortunately for the Donahues, the body was not Shane. It was determined to be that of a local missing teen. Internet sleuths and others have tried matching unidentified John Doe's to Shane, but to no avail. As if the Donahue family hadn't been through enough heartbreak, on June 13, 2019, Cheyenne Rose Donahue, the baby of the family, died just 10 days after her 28th birthday. At 15, she was accepted into the summer medical internship at Georgetown University and Johns Hopkins. She graduated high school a year early at 16 to pursue her dream of becoming a doctor. She received a bachelor's degree in science and chemistry from Virginia Commonwealth University. Cheyenne also received a degree in substance abuse counseling, as that was a true passion for her, coinciding with the Shane Donahue Foundation. In recent years, her main goal was to make a difference within the community and educate people on addiction. Cheyenne worked so hard with the Shane Donahue Foundation that it consumed her, but not knowing what happened to Shane was harder. She could no longer deal with the heartache and pain that overwhelmed her and the depression she suffered. Donna Donahue posted on Find Shane Donahue Facebook group for Shane's 36th birthday. In it, she states that Cheyenne's death is contributed to Shane's disappearance. And in 2022, she was diagnosed with lung cancer, her third cancer. 
when she underwent radiation treatments. She also states that police have started to re-interview people in relation to his disappearance. And that's basically all the information we have. There was very little media coverage of Shane's disappearance during that time and even up until now. Few news articles have been written in the last 13 years. Shane Donahue was 23 years old at the time of his disappearance. He would be 36 now. He's 5 foot 11 with brown hair and brown eyes. Shane wore glasses, but they were broken around the time of his disappearance. Shane was an avid golf lover and a family-oriented young man. He has ties to Northern Virginia, Washington, D.C., and Baltimore, Maryland. Shane was last seen and heard from on March 22, 2010. He finished a tile job for a local business and was paid $5,000. He hired his friend Timmy Hickerson to help with the job and paid him $1,000 for his work. Timmy gave Shane a ride to his parents' house on Aiden Road, where they stayed for a bit. Shane told his mom he had to go and that he loved her, and then they left in Timmy's truck and headed back to Shane's. There were no signs of Shane making it home, and both his phones went off around 4 p.m. at the same time. Anyone with information that may lead to Shane's whereabouts or what happened to him is encouraged to contact the Prince William County Police Department at 703-792-6500. Again, that's 703-792-6500. Shane's case number is 10-050509. Anonymous tips can be made at 866-411-TIPS. That's 866-411-8477. Or you can contact Crime Solvers at 540-349-1000. The Donahue family is offering a $25,000 reward and Prince William County Crime Solvers is offering an additional $1,000 for information leading to Shane's whereabouts. And that's the case of Shane Donahue. If you or someone you know has information, even the slightest bit and the smallest tip of information may help. Be sure to subscribe to Crime Connoisseurs wherever you get your podcasts and follow us on Instagram at Crime Connoisseurs. In the meantime, keep it classy, connoisseurs, and I'll catch you on the next case. Are you tired of settling for subpar cat food? It's time to upgrade your cat's dining experience with Smalls, the ultimate gourmet meal for your feline companion. Say goodbye to generic one-size-fits-all cat food. With Smalls, you can rest assured that your furry friend is getting the nutrition they deserve. Join the thousands of cat owners who have made the switch to Smalls and see the difference it can make in your cat's health and happiness. Treat your cat to the finest dining experience with Smalls. Visit smalls.sjv.io backslash ccpod now to order your first box. That's smalls.sjv.io backslash ccpod. Choose Smalls because your cat deserves the best.